Pull up the boom about five inches. It looks okay, like. Okay, you're ready on set. Hey, uh, Ten seconds. Be careful out there. Male enhancement check, please. Six. Five. Can we fade to black? Three. You're just calling to annoy us. Please wait for the beep, then hang up. Hey there, I'm Cookie Masterson, and don't worry, this isn't my first love scene. Listen, don't worry, I find that most people enjoy playing alone. And today's wrong answer of the game is being brought to you by... Brown Anna Banana Toasters. For a perfectly toasted banana the first time and every time. Say, nice banana. Hang on tight, we're in for a ride. Right off the bat, will you calamari me? If Nadia Suleiman, better known as the Octomom, actually behaved like a female octopus, what would happen after she gave birth? She'd die, her spine would dissolve, she'd eat her children, or she'd eat the genitals of the father of her children. An octopus, much like yourself, is also terrible at trivia. I so wanted you to pick this one. Female octopuses... Octopi? Eh, whatever. Die shortly after their eggs hatch, so the Octomom would unfortunately kick the bucket. Then they bury her in one casket and her uterus in another. How about I Heart Adam? If Albert Einstein had written a romantic comedy about the atomic relationship between neutrons and electrons, which Jennifer Aniston flick would have provided the most appropriate title? The Breakup, The Object of My Affection, He's Just Not That Into You, or Leprechaun. Because neutrons have no electrical charge, the negatively charged electrons are not, and never will be, attracted to them. But I did see a picture in Us Weekly of an electron getting frozen yogurt with a proton in Palm Springs. Woo! <laughs> Open wide for bed bugs, bye bye bye, and it's a toxic disordat. I'm gonna read you a list of seven names. For each one, you need to tell me if it's a boy band or an insect repellent brand. If it's a boy band, press the square button. If it's insect repellent, press your circle button. Each one right gets you 300 bucks. Each one wrong costs you 300 bucks. And like someone putting a roach out of its misery, you'll want to make it quick. Answer fast for more cash. Okay, let's move. Take that! Cutter! 98 degree damage! Off! Ultra pure! Ozone! On a scale of Joey Fatone to Justin Timberlake, I'd say that performance was a Lance Bass. Nice, but nothing special. I play the 98 Degrees Christmas CD to keep ants out of my kitchen. Let's try facelift book. Which website would not be a fancier version of Facebook? Physiognomy book, Natee's book, countenance book, or visage book? No, your physiognomy is your face. Face? Here's what a right answer looks like. Natee's book would be a fancy name for ass book. And trust me, you don't want your friend to poke you on ass book. Where's the bomb girl? Rock my world girl. Ooh, yeah. I call this one gory. Suppose Al Gore gets gore during the running of the bulls in Spain. If he demands a recount of all the bulls and steers in the run, what will the recount find? 12 suspicious bulls and steers, 20 dubious bulls and steers, 36 fishy bulls and steers, or 51 questionable bulls and steers? Each day of the running of the bulls festival, six bulls are released along with six steer. So 12 animals in total. The bull's horn didn't pierce Al Gore all the way through. It just left him with dangling chaps. 
That brings it close to round one. And you're in pretty good shape for now. Don't forget, all the questions in round two are worth double. And keep in mind, the wrong answer of the game is still out there waiting for you. Okay then, here we go. It's time for I Love You, Meth Cooper. I've been watching that AMC show Breaking Bad about a high school chemistry teacher who uses his science powers for evil by manufacturing drugs. And speaking of chemistry, the title Breaking Bad contains several chemical symbols such as BR, K, N, and BA. So now it's time for a chemistry pop quiz. Which of those symbols have I matched with the wrong name? Bromine, BR, potassium, K. Ready for this? N stands for nitrogen. Nickel is N-I. Chemistry was never my strong suit in high school. And by that I mean I didn't have chemistry with anyone of the opposite sex or the same sex, really. No, for some reason, K is the symbol for potassium. Just like there's an abundance of potassium in bananas, which will go great with your... Brand new banana toaster from Brownana's Banana Toasters. Because bananas were never meant to be eaten at room temperature. Today's wrong answer of the game is accompanied by an $8,000 cash bonus. Have at it. Question seven. Why not try? This heavy metal band is confusing. What might a typical headbanger yell at a satan-worshipping death metal concert? Neptune's moon rocks! Helicopters kick ass! Meet some- <laughs> Fail. <laughs> Why didn't you pick this? Satan is a common vegetarian meat substitute made from cooked wheat gluten. Yeah, that should be a pretty awesome concert. Walking chickens picking out a mate. Oh. Guess I'll marry eight. And on its way, Referio. I don't know if you've ever been to Rio de Janeiro, but they have that giant stone statue looming over the city called Christ the Redeemer. It's real famous. If Rio's Christ the Redeemer statue were refereeing a game played by other giant statues, what call would he be making? Touchdown! Safe! The Christ the Redeemer statue's arms are stuck straight out to the sides, sort of like an umpire calling a baseball player safe. Still, Christ would make a pretty annoying ump, constantly saying things like, You know, the only way to be truly safe is to accept me as your personal savior. Here we have... Stop rhyming now, I mean it. Eating which of these snacks would make Mr. Peanut a cannibal? Corn nuts, Cracker Jacks, Grape Nuts, or Munchies? Cracker Jacks is the only snack listed that contains nuts. What does Mr. Peanut eat anyway? I'm guessing it's a lot of fish. Don't know why, just seems like he'd eat a lot of fish. Maybe it's the monocle. Hold me, never let me go. And my Here's one for you, Big Dickens. Which Charles Dickens novel ends most like the way The Sopranos ended? Great Expectations, The Mystery of Edwin Drood, A Christmas Carol, or Little Dorrit? Dickens died before finishing The Mystery of Edwin Drood, so it pretty much stops without getting to an ending. Just as, love it or hate it, the last episode of The Sopranos dramatically cuts to black. I hate it when things don't have proper endings. Reminds me of a joke. A mobster, a writer, and a turn-of-the-century British street urchin walk into a... <laughs> Step right up to the jack attack. When you see two clues that match, press the X button. 4,000 if you're right, but say goodbye to 4,000 if you're wrong, and don't ever forget... Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Sequel. The subtitle. Get ready for a massive disappointment. Good luck.
that's all she wrote. Well, Big Shot, you achieved what everybody else in this great country strives for, filling your once empty skull with meaningless facts. Way to go. Now you're qualified to, to, uh, collect unemployment. You don't know Jack! Nice one, folks. Okay, Danny, let us know what we're doing. All right, give you the hate sign if you're interested in more playage. Next time on the Laugh Factory Radio stand-up special, it's visual comedian Rich Coolidge. You ever walk into a restaurant and the waiter looks at you like this? And you go like this? <laughs> I told my mom I was single and she handed me this. Look at it. <laughs> if I ever own a poster shop, this is what I'm going to sell. Hoochie mama. <laughs> That's next time on the Laugh Factory Radio stand-up special. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya. Do you ever feel like your fishy friends get the raw end of every deal? When the chihuahuas are carried around in their Louis Vuitton purses and the labradoodles are on long walks in their fur trim vests, your goldie fish is left in its bowl, naked. So come shop at Fashion Fish Does. We are the country's leading provider of designer fish apparel and accessories. Hat, shoes, glasses, pants, underwater styles that'll make your fish look fantastic. Right, Goldie? Come to Fashion Feast Does. Did you know that 12 cups of raw spinach has as much sodium as an order of french fries at McDonald's? Did you say as much sodium as french fries? And that 54 cups of spinach has just as many calories? As many calories as french fries? Makes you think twice about eating spinach, doesn't it? Yes. Spinach. Is it really strong to the finish? Vote no on Proposition 14H and keep spinach and other vegetables out of our schools. I'm so embarrassed, Barbara. I just don't know why this is happening to me. Maybe it's time we considered getting a little help. What about a prescription drug? Or maybe I should just put my dick in a splint. Trouble chubbing up? Scared of pills? Now there's help from Professor Willie's Dingle Splints. The only $5.99 over-the-counter solution for erectile dysfunction. Thank you so much, honey. Don't thank me. Thank Professor Willie. Professor Willie's Dingle Splints. Getting wood the old-fashioned way. Immigration, gay marriage, the Bill of Rights. Is it just me, or is America falling apart? I'm Lindsay St. Simone, and if you vote for me, I promise to construct a 40-foot concrete wall around the entire nation. No one will get in or out. Under my regime, I guarantee that my oppressive foot soldier militia will strip all citizens equally of their every right. Isn't it about time we got America back on track? This November, vote Lindsay St. Simone for fascist dictator. This message paid for by St. Simone Mini Golf and Go-Kart on Route 16. Hello, I'm Nick Bear, and I'm not here to sell you anything. I used my own money to buy some advertising time to let the world know that I hate Jeff Hansen. This isn't a tricky sales ploy or a joke. Seriously, Jeff Hansen of Chicago, Illinois, is a real person and a jerk, and I really hate him. A lot. I am not a rich man. This commercial is expensive and is taking most of the money that I would use to send my children to college. But if it makes any of you understand just how much I hate Jeff Hansen, who is a real person who works in Chicago and lives in Evanston, has brown hair and is about six foot four, then it will be worth it. If I have one hope, it is that spending my entire life savings in these scary economic times will burn the name Jeff Hansen into your brain so that if you ever had the misfortune of actually meeting him, you will remember just how deeply and totally I hate this man and take it as a warning to steer clear. Thank you for listening, unless you happen to be Jeff Hansen, in which case, f*** you, sir. <laughs>